So this is what I wanted to speak, actually, because this is something that has had a lasting impression on my mind and heart, and probably the most important day in my life. Um, I had joined the Pittsburgh Temple, where Mahendra was the temple president at the time. I was a full-time student at the time, getting my master's degree, but because my university was across the street from the temple, they allowed me to stay in the temple. And one month after I had joined, they said, Prabhupada's coming, in great excitement. So we all jumped into vans and cars, and we drove up to New York to meet Prabhupada at the JFK airport. And as different from this country, England, um, there we were allowed to have a, a raucous, rip-roaring kirtan. And we had a kirtan for about 45 minutes, a very loud, very joyful, and of course there were devotees from all over the west, the east coast, and I guess other parts as well, many devotees. And it was my first time to ever meet Srila Prabhupada. So all of a sudden, the, these double doors opened up, and Srila Prabhupada didn't walk, but appeared to me to be floating through. And as soon as I saw him, as soon as my eyes fell on him. This is the experience I had, which is hard to understand in three-dimensional life. But for me, it was like tears, which started in my toes and shot up my whole body and then shot out like this. And in my mind, something was saying, he's a pure devotee of the Lord. Now, I didn't even know what that concept meant. I didn't have any idea, but that's what I understood at that point. And I, then I went into obeisances like everyone else in the room. And then after a little while, actually Prabhupada walked right in front of me. After a little while I understood that everyone in the room was soaking wet like I was. And that was my first impression. I was initiated in Vrindavan in 1976, in April. Actually, um, I had told the temple authorities that I would like to get initiated in Mayapur, because I felt that that is the land where all the mercy is flowing and I needed mercy. But they said, no, your name is on the list for Vrindavan. And I said, oh no, please, for Mayapur. And they said, no. So anyway, it had to be Vrindavan. And, um, and since then, for some reason, I've always had more of a relationship with Vrindavan. But um, so um, I went up for my beads and Prabhupada said, your name is Jagatam Dasi. And I said, excuse me, Srila Prabhupada? I did, didn't recognize the name. He said, Jagatam Dasi. So it was quite clear. And then after the ceremony, um, his servant, his secretary, and the temple president came up to me and said, oh look, that's not your name. Your name is actually Jagatam Adishatri. It's in this book, Radha Sahasranam. And they opened the book up and showed me this long name, Jagatam Adishatri, which means beloved of the creator of the universes. So it's a name for Radharani. So, but anyway, I, I used to just, when people asked me my name, I would say Jagatam because it's so much easier. And if I would write, assign a letter, I would use the whole name. But um, what was interesting is um, when, when I first joined the temple, um, I was a feminist. And I was thinking in my mind, oh, I don't want a, a feminine-sounding name. I want a short name and something simple. And that's what I got. <laughs> so um, England was the last place that Prabhupada visited in, in his touring before he left this world and I was here at the time. I was staying at, um, I think it was at Bury Place at the time, doing St. Catan with all the ladies there. And of course, we were invited to come over to the manor and stay while Srila Prabhupada was here. And it was a very devastating time for us because it was shocking to see, you know, how his body had diminished in size so much. And, um, but it, Many people have told this story, how he was carried down on, in a palanquin, which is right here. And he would sit um, in the Vyasa Sun area, and we would all sing Sri Guru Charnapadma. And many devotees recounted how 
during that very special time when Prabhupada wasn't speaking, but he was looking at each and every devotee. And I, myself, don't remember him looking at me. And I remember that I felt like I was in Maya that time because I was struggling a lot in my spiritual life. Not my spiritual life, but I was struggling on Sankirtan and, you know, and my mind was really getting the better of me. And, and I do remember that he didn't look at me and in the years past I, I heard devotees saying, oh, but he gave me that special look and I didn't get it. So after some time, I, um, I prayed to Srila Prabhupada. I, not pray, but I just started speaking to him. You didn't look at me, and I was feeling so sad about that, and I was thinking about it a lot. And then one day, he appeared to me in his beautiful, beautiful form, sitting down, and he gave me the most beautiful oceanic smile, um, like the lady from Pennsylvania said, oceanic. He just sat there and gave me the most beautiful, all-encompassing, loving, compassionate smile. So there, then I knew that, again, he's not an ordinary person, he's Jagat Guru, he can hear your prayers. Sometimes devotees take initiation from different gurus who are um, advanced and advancing but maybe they cannot appear in your vision or your dreams or like that. But Srila Prabhupada is on a different category altogether. He's the highest level of Uttama Adhikari. So, um, you know, so many uh, years have gone past, maybe 40, almost 45 years for me, and we've all had our ups and downs, but we can never forget Srila Prabhupada and how much love he had for us. That, his love is not a material love. It's a pure transcendental love, which is born of the compassion that comes from Shumati Radhika herself. And that, because of that, we're his children and we feel so cared for. Jai, Jai Anilo.